My name is Eric Middleton. I'm an IPM advisor covering San Diego, Orange, and Los Angeles counties. And I'm Jerry Spinelli, production horticulture advisor for San Diego County. And we want to talk a little bit about black lights today because we're doing a project looking at agave mites, uh, but they're very difficult to see, um, especially if you're looking at them and trying to find them under a scope. So we used black lights to try to illuminate them um, and want to use that information passed on to you so you know what black lights you can use to better see agave mites. So Jerry is going to go over the different black lights that we purchased, and then we'll talk a little bit afterwards about which ones are going to be the most effective for you. So first of all, the handheld uh, uh, flashlights. This is called a well tool. It's a M2BF. This is called a Convoy CH. This is called a ESCO light, ESCO light. And this is called a Fluke. RLD2 is the model. And then we have a uh, bulb. This is made of LEDs, black light LEDs. This is made by Bluex bulb. And this instead is a ring light that you add to your um, microscope. And oh, sorry, I brought this in way too that's early. The bulb. <laughs> that's the bulb. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were holding the bulb for some reason. That's the bulb. Sorry. That's where you put the bulb. And this is the ring light that you add to your microscope. And this one is made by Boli Optics and is the 6 watt version. And finally, we have this monster here. It's made by Yang Yang Light and it's a 200 watt LED uh, black light. So of all the different lights we tested, these are the two that we suggest you use. We have the well tool, and then we also have the convoy. So both of these are going to work pretty well, and we'll show you the different ways that they work. Um, we'll show you how they illuminate the mites, and there's also two different tests you can do. One is pointing at sort of a spot on the wall and seeing how well it illuminates it, and then another one is looking at something like a $100 bill or anything else that has a sort of fluorescent strip on it. Um, whatever makes that fluorescent strip reappear really well, that light is probably going to work pretty well for you. So again, we have the well tool and the convoy. Um, as the two lights that we recommend you purchase if you're going to be looking for agave mites. So one other thing that sort of lets you know which lights will tend to be the best are these are two over here, the Fluke and the Eco Light that we don't recommend so much. And when you look into them, you can see the LEDs inside of them. There's no kind of filter over the LEDs. These two, which are ones that we do recommend, the Petoskey Stone and the Well Tool, do have a filter over the top. So you can't actually see the LED lights inside. And so that usually indicates that it's filtering out the other light that you don't really want that's providing that non-specific illumination and just has the UV light coming out, which again is what you want to be able to see that contrast uh, where you can distinguish the mites from the background. So you can see some of the mites there, although it is actually being left out a little bit on the screen as well. But let's try zooming in here. So we can really start to see some of the eggs. Are those the eggs? Yeah, okay. so it's sort of the round football things that are fluorescing a little bit bluish. Make me football, yeah. that's <laughs> And then you can see a dead mite, which is the guy who's sort of a um, bit more whitish down on the right hand side who's not moving and there's living mites up top, or these appear to be living mites up top. Save this stuff so we can really know who made the stuff. Yeah. So it turns out that this stuff, this thing that was bleaching out, out there in the sun. Yeah, it's out there. It's got some. Older. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. They, you know, they can survive in a bunch of different places, it seems. But yeah. So that's what this looks like. Let's try the other. It's said those other ones that we inoculated, we treat them with love in the greenhouse. Okay, so this shows it really well. It has finally adjusted. You can see stuff, but it's not easy. Um, you can see though they're basically all over. This is the same, this is like the exact same angle. I haven't moved it at all. So you can see some of the mites moving, and you can see some of the eggs but there's not co good contrast. Everything is just like sort of a different shade of blue. So it's day and night basically. Over the previous one, the yeah. previous one they had. Yep, so that's, this is one that we don't recommend. So let's see, yeah, let's kind of do it in order. 
Here's one that we don't recommend. You can see the mites, you can see some eggs, but there's not a lot of contrast. Here's another one, yeah, that we don't recommend, but that is a, seems to be a little bit better. This one, um, which one is this one? This is the Ecolite. So the Ecolite seems to show the adults a little bit better, where they're popping a little bit more. You can sort of see their color, but you can't see the eggs very well. And again, everything is sort of the same color of bluish. Here is one that we do recommend. This is the Petrosky stone, I believe is what it's called. And here, let's see, you can see them a little bit better. The eggs start to pop more, and the adults, you can see all of them. So this one's pretty good. And you can, yeah, sort of see more of that contrast. And you can definitely tell there's just there's more colors. There's a bunch of different colors in here that you hadn't seen before. So the background's more pinkish, the mites and the eggs are a bit more bluish. And that contrast makes it much easier to have more accurately count how many things there are. And then the last one is the one I usually use the most, which is the well tool. And here, <laughs> let's see, come on. There we go. This seems to have the most contrast, where you can see the mites very clearly, and you can also see all of the eggs quite clearly as well. So this is a really good example of kind of yeah, the different lights and how the ones that illuminate everything evenly aren't as effective as the ones that illuminate things selectively. And then finally, let's take a look at what it looks like with normal white light on it. And it's going to take it a second to sort of adjust. But you'll notice the problem is basically the same. You can see the mites, you can see some of the eggs, but there isn't a lot of contrast. And especially, you can't see the eggs that are kind of down in this section nearly as much. So when it's coming to accurate counts of how many mites, how many eggs there are at their presence, it really helps to get that much stronger visual contrast. Okay, do we want to try the ring light? Let's do it. See if that does anything. So yeah, That's this good. one's not bad. You can see that there's contrast. So. This would be good for seeing the mites. When I'm looking at this, I can't see the eggs at all. Like I would maybe tell you there's like two eggs that I could see here. Um, whereas if we let's see if we can even just like use both at the same time. Yeah. So here I brought in the well tool. And now you can suddenly see the eggs. Whereas without it, they're gone. It looks like they're not even there. So this ring light is not bad. It looks like you can see the mites, but again, for that greater contrast, trying to see the eggs, this is when you can actually see them. And you have the well tool light as well. Huh, that's kind of cool. But yeah, the ring light would be useful um, just for counting some mites, because then it also means you don't need to have one hand holding uh, the flashlight. You can just sort of have this on um, and look from this way. Although I will say when I am personally looking through the scope, I can't see anything. Like it's not bright enough um, to have an effect. Whereas if I bring in the well tool, now I can see things through the scope. Um, but yeah, the camera's a little bit more sensitive. I can mount this up. I suppose that's going to be a perennial problem with uh, filming this is that it looks like <laughs> what it looks like to the naked eye versus what it looks like to the camera. All right, so we have a bunch of the different flashlights here, and one really good way to tell if these are likely to work and help you find agave mites and make sure that the mites fluoresce um, and they aren't washed out by the rest of the black light is to do a test on something that fluoresces like these different strips that we'll see in a second on different high denomination dollar bills. So basically 20, 50, and 100 will all have fluorescent strips in them that if they fluoresce with the black lights, it means those black lights will probably work pretty well for finding agape mites. Uh, most of the ones that work really well, we find have this kind of filter over the top, um, and they're also 365 nanometers in wavelength. The ones that don't have the filter tend not to work so well. So we've turned down the light so we can see it a little bit better, but let's start off with this flashlight, which is, uh, I believe the brand is Fluke. And we turn it on and you see it illuminates 
the bills, but you don't really see um, the kind of strips showing up anywhere. So this is not a very good option for finding the agave mites. We then move on to this escolite, which also illuminates the bills pretty well, but you can start to see the different lines. You see on the left-hand side of the 20, and then just to the right-hand side of Grant there, you can see um, the strip that's being illuminated on the 50. So this works pretty well, but it also is illuminating the bills a lot. So this is an option that could work, but it's probably not the best. Then we start getting onto some of the other flashlights that I personally like to use for the agave mites. And here, you can see it really well. This one is a well tool flashlight. This is the one that I normally use. And you can see, yes, it does illuminate the bills maybe just a little bit, but you can see how the different fluorescent lines really, really pop up on both the 20 and the 50, much more so with, than with the previous ones. And then finally, we have um, the Petoskey Stone or also the Convoy flashlight. And this one is a little bit more directional, a little bit more intense, as you can see. And this also works pretty well, where you can see it lighting up the fluorescent line on the 20 and then also over here on the 50. One of the other ways that you can tell if you actually have the black light in hand or if you already have one um, that you can use to tell if it will be good for finding the mites is to basically point it at a wall with something that fluoresces on the wall. So we have a piece of white paper up here. This is the fluke flashlight and you can see yes it causes the piece of paper to fluoresce. It shows up more brightly but you also notice that there's just a halo of light around it. This is acting like a flashlight where it illuminates everything and not just the piece of paper which fluoresces. So this is a more sort of even illumination, which is not really what we're looking for. This next one is the Ecolite. Again, not one we would recommend. And you can see it's a bit better. It makes it so that the piece of paper fluoresces, but there is still a halo of light around it. And it's sort of illuminating everything, at least a little bit evenly. Again, not necessarily what you're looking for. What you are looking for, we have the Petoskey Stone flashlight, is where only the paper seems to illuminate and is much brighter. There's essentially no other illumination around it. You can see only things that fluoresce under UV light are showing up, and they're showing up very, very brightly. The same thing is true of the well tool, which is again the one I use probably the most, which is you can't tell that the light is on except for the fact that the paper is fluorescing very, very brightly. So again, no halo of light around it. It's just the um, paper itself which is fluorescing. And again, that's what you want. You want high contrast between the things that do fluoresce and the things that don't. Yeah, that'd be an example of a very large light that we tried because one of the things we were looking for was just a huge amount of illumination. It was really hard to see the mites underneath the scope. This provides a huge amount of illumination, but again, while the piece of paper fluoresces, you can still see the rest of the wall is being lit up really well. Again, it doesn't provide that contrast uh, that we're looking for, despite the fact that it provides a whole lot of light and illumination. And then, let's try this one. Um, we have another light bulb with the same general thing. Again, it provides a huge amount of light. It's lighting up the entire room almost, but it's not causing the paper to fluoresce very brightly, brightly, and it's also leading to everything else being illuminated as well. So despite the fact that both of these throw out a huge amount of light, you might think they'd be very effective at sort of illuminating uh, these pieces of agave and show you the mites, they're non-specific illumination, and that means they're not going to work very well for your needs.